and welcome back. Today is all about finding the right combinations. At ChemCon Asia 2019's welcome reception, delegates were reunited. In today's interview, we will talk on the impact of mergers and acquisitions on the product stewardship organization. And our local reporter will talk about the division between North and South Korea. We start with Jean Cho with some soundbite from the workshop on K-Reach and the seminar on global notification and trends of chemical management. This morning session is quite interesting, um, the, especially for the, you know, the workshop for the uh, carriage and the print notification. Well, the last show with the foreign companies ask the questions. Uh, I feel, you know, um, the companies are still struggling uh, to do their, you know, pre-notification, pre-registration. But the, uh, as the, you know, the MINA saw from the MOE recommend us, um, you know, the please do the pre-registration anyways. Uh, you know, um, if you do have any lack of data, just submit it and then you can just um, submit any additional data. Then you can fulfill all of the, you know, the uh, requirement for the carriage uh, on time. In my presentation this morning, I basically have called for uh, there are trends in the development of chemical in the chemical regulation around the world, and um, we would like the authorities, the various regulatory authorities, to um, to look at a bit more collaboration with the industry to hear what the industry have to say because we have a lot of experience, and um, also to. Um, to also looking at the, sometimes looking at the basics of implementation enforcement and not just uh, a, a regulation and basically that if we have a lot of learning between the industry and authorities I think such collaboration and listening to each other will be really great going forward in the future. Time to connect with Hanjan. Where are you? I'm at the Seoul War Memorial Museum in front of Statue of Brothers. This statue portrays a dramatic reunion where a family's oldest son, a South Korean soldier, and his younger brother, a North Korean soldier, meet on the battlefield. Their embrace shows reconciliation and forgiveness. But before I tell you more on this difficult part in our history, please watch my more cheerful impression of the welcome reception. The welcome reception was in the wonderful waterfall garden of the Grand Hyatt Seoul. The location provided an excellent opportunity to reunite with old friends and to meet new people in this refreshing and vibrant environment. Thank you for the report. We will connect later to learn more about the War Memorial Museum. Meanwhile, we will watch today's interview on the impact of mergers and acquisitions on the product stewardship organization. Volker, can you mention a few ingredients that helped getting a successful merger in place? First of all, it's good to have uh, a timetable. You need a clear, we are talking about a day one readiness approach. So you need clear tasks to be fulfilled at, uh, until a certain date. We need a checklist. You need um, other, let's say, um, booklets where you can refer to so that you do not have to reinvent the wheel. Um, and those and descriptions show you what you have to do first and what can be done after the day one readiness. And we are talking about an 80-20 strategy so 80% have to be fixed for the day one readiness and the other 20% could be done afterwards together with a company or with parts of the company when uh, you, you, are, you are selling until you are able to change them uh, accordingly, uh, accordingly uh, and, and using your own uh, company number for example. Communication will be quite key to make sure that people are on the same page uh, with the same objective, knowing that what they are expected and what they need in order to get a task done. You can watch the complete interview on our YouTube and Youku channel. After this interview on mergers and acquisitions, let's learn more about the recent Korean history. Hunjung, you're still at the Korean War Memorial. Can you tell us a little bit about the division between North and South and the war? Here on Peace Plaza, they have flags commemorating United Nations Command, forces of 16 countries, that fought in the Korean War between 1950 till 1953. A lot of weapons and equipment are shown in the war memorial. At the end of Second World War, 
it was agreed that Korea would be placed for a period of up to five years under a four-power trusteeship the Soviet Union, the United States, the United Kingdom, and China. Therefore, at the end of the Second World War, the Soviet forces accepted the Japanese surrendering Korea north of the 38 degree north parallel line, while the American forces accepted such surrender south of that line. This arbitrary line, originally serving as a marker of military responsibility, soon became a complete barrier to free movement between North and South Korea. In June 25, 1950, the Korean War broke out when the North Korea breached the 38th parallel line to invade the South, ending any hope of a peaceful reunification for the time being. It has resulted in separation of the country into two parts until today. The clock tower shows two young girls holding clocks, symbolizing war and peace. One girl holds a broken clock in which time stopped when the war started. Next to the tower, there is the clock of hope for peaceful unification. Someday when unification is realized, this clock will be put on the tower and will indicate the time of unification. The key message from this museum is, if you want peace, remember war. A universal message, I would say. Yes, let's remember and strive for peace. We humans can create a big mess in the world, so it's also up to us to create solutions for it. Like we need solutions for many other problems we create. For instance, microplastics. Something I will discuss with Miklena Mihova from EPA during the Statement of the Day. Good to have you here, Miklena. Thank you. Miklena, can you tell us about the current status of microplastics? Sure. So the uh, ECHO issued this uh, year in January the restriction proposal of microplastic, which is in the broader context very ambitious in itself, covering uh, many sectors and with broad definition of microplastics. Right now there is an ongoing consultation offering the possibility to industry to provide information to RAC and SEAC till the 20th of September. And your statement is? Microplastic regulation should be ambitious but realistic and adapted to industry sectors. Meglena, thank you very much. Please let us know what you think about this. It's almost time for the forecast of the day, but first we go to our local reporter to see if she has another animal cafe to show. I'm at Nature Cafe where they have sheep. A good place for your international delegates to come and count sheep to overcome their jet lag. Talking about sheep, the flock follows the bellwether. Please join us at the exhibition this week and participate in our exhibition game. You can collect stickers at each exhibition booth. Collect them all and enter our prize draw with many prizes from the exhibitors. And now it's time for the forecast of the day. This morning more on Korea, not only K-REACH but also KBPR, as well as a broader outlook into global buy sites and global consumer goods regulations. In the afternoon we look into managing business impact in the global supply chain, followed by zooming in to the safe use of chemicals focusing on classification of complex mixtures. Furthermore, microplastics, waste and circular economy issues. Thank you for watching and enjoy your day.